Hello again YouTube and we have a nice big TV here. I think it's a 32 inch. This is a Samsung TV. Um, I don't know what the model number is, but it's they will match for muchness. No, it's not. It's an LG TV. I'm making completely no sense at all. It's an LG TV, but they are pretty much much the same. That's the same what you basically get in the TV. Pass line, the logic board. Now this has got a thought on it at the moment. See, there's no picture. And that's because um, the backlight's gone out. So if I get a torch, and you should be able to see there is a picture. If I angle it right, I don't, oh, is it going to come out? It's not come up on camera. No, I'll have to do it from the behind. That isn't really, no, it's not really working, but there, there's no backlight. So that's the fault with the board. Fault with the board, fault with the TV. I'm oh, making no sense at all. So this is the uh, make and model of the TV. It's a 40 inch. Look at that. 40 inch TV. Yeah, it's a JVC. So when I said it was an LG or Samsung, I was completely completely making it up. It's a JVC TV. And when you've done a lot of TVs, you tend to find that they're all fairly the same. So you have a similar construction. You have the main screen and you have a ribbon cable here, which is the screen data. And then you have obviously things like the speakers and what have you. Speakers are down there. Little Wi-Fi Bluetoothy module. It's a Broadcom chip. VTA is Wi-Fi because you've got the antenna cutouts in the board there. And then you end up with the main logic board, which does all the video processing stuff. And then you've got a power supply, which obviously powers it all. And typically you have a backlight power supply and you have a logic board power supply. So you have the input coming in here and then a nice lotion cap, but then you tend to find you have two outputs. So this side will be backlight and you can tell that because there's a wire going off to the screen. And then you have an interconnect here. So this side will be the logic board power supply. And as you can see, this board is made by that company. That's the part number. So if you Google that part number, luckily you can find the diagrams. So here's the circuit diagram for that power supply. And so you've got your mains input coming in here, all filtered, rect uh, all filtered up here. Then it goes into a rectifier here. It's just a funny way of drawing a rectifier. And then you've got your big uh, transformer with your switching. So there's a MOSFET switch, gives you your different outputs. And then that goes off to your logic board and stuff. And the bit that we're interested in on the back page is here. So you've got 24 volts coming in from that main transformer. Then you've got a switch here. And then that boosts it up to the LED screen. Now this TV is intermittent and when it does work, we're getting around about 80 volts here. And when it doesn't work, we're getting about... 24 volts, which is the same as the input. So we're not getting any switching, it's going straight through. And so that's not enough voltage to light the screen. And then when we measure it, here on the gate drive pin of this MOSFET, we're getting no pulses. And that is controlled by this IC here. You see, I've been drawing over it. So I've measured the supply of the um, chip, uh, the enable pin, because the logic board can control the backlight. I don't really know why you'd want to turn off the backlight for a TV, but it's an option, I guess. And you see gate drive there is zero volts. And of course, checked on the oscilloscope, make sure there's no pulses or anything, but that's completely dead. So my betting is it going with this chip here. And the nice thing about these drawers I found online is you can actually see parts, see their part identifications of where they're on the board. So quite often you'll get a diagram like this and it'll say something like, I don't know, R36, three, uh, 136, and you would be like, where is that? And of course, with this, you actually find it on here and find out where it is. So to confirm that fault, I'd fitted the IC that does the uh, gate drive is on the underside of this board. And it needs to be plugged in by this internet to turn on and actually allow me to measure stuff. So to actually make measurements, I've had to put flowing leads on the back of that IC coming up to here. So this is the gate pin, pin 4. And I've got things like the enable pin, pin 2. Oh no, that's ground. That's the gate. But you get the idea. So you can measure pins with that. And of course, I put some tape on it so it doesn't short on the middle. So that's how you can measure stuff that's on the underside. So I've ordered a new one of them. And my old friend, eBay, has come. And I bought these new ICs off eBay. So I'll take that board out and show you what the other side looks like. Now, as this board has been on, you've got to be a bit careful that some of these caps can still hold a charge. So I'll just go around them and just make sure that they are discharged. Uh! No, I'm doing it's fine. That they are discharged, and sometimes they will spark like that. So just go around, and make sure the caps are discharged, so you don't get a buzz off them. And that's the uh, 
buggers. That's the IC in question. So they're all my flying leads. So I need to take them off and then we need to uh, change the IC. And there's the MOSFET that does the switching. And being eBay, my uh, new devices arrived in nice ESD safe plastic packaging. <laughs> Not. So before I take this off, obviously you've got to remember which way pin one is, because I don't think it is marked on the board. So make a note, pin one is the one with the little dot, so your IC you put on there has got to be the same way around. And we're just going to use some solder wick to remove it. So that is the chip removed. So all we've got to do now is, well, clean the pads up. Let's fit the new one, obviously making sure we put it the right around. There is actually an indentation in the super screen there to show you where the pin one is. So we'll put that on and we'll see if it works. So that's the new uh, boost converter I see fitted. And so we'll screw it onto the back of the TV bing, and see if it works. So that is the IC, the uh, power supply put back in and the IC has been changed. You can see the backlight is on from the glowing in the back. And if you look at the front, oh look, it's my other channel. Rather be flying that's playing. Oh, shameless plug. So uh, after you've watched this video, you can go over to that channel. <laughs> Links in the description. But uh, yeah, that's it for now. Thank you very much, and I shall see you later. Whoa!